So the head gaskets finally got here in the mail. Here they are, as well as the uh, oil filter, the spark plugs. I've also bought a carburetor rebuild kit because we're probably going to need it, as well as the valve shim kit for this thing. So now, now we can start working on reassembling the engine. Got the head back in place, torqued everything down, uh, put the cams in. I torqued these down to torque down the cams. And I measured the valve clearances, and yes, they are off. Not by a lot, but by enough to where I do have to, I do have to change them, which means I have to measure how much smaller they have to be, and then take the cams off, replace the shims, put the cams back on, torque everything back down, and then re-measure it to make sure my uh, calculations are correct. Finally got the engine back assembled. That wasn't too hard. These things are not that complicated. Once you do them a couple times, uh, it gets kind of familiar doing timing and all that kind of stuff. So it is good that I did buy that valve shim kit because I had to replace five out of the eight shims in this engine to get the valves back into spec. They weren't terribly off of spec. They were like uh, yeah, a little bit off spec, but it, it's good to get them as close as possible to spec. So now, now we can finally start working on reassembling this onto the frame.
Alright, the thing is mostly reassembled. Now, I was reading the comments in the last video of this project, and a lot of you guys were saying that these tires are just way too small for the scale of this thing. Now, I do agree with you. Once I put the gas tank on here, the seat on here, yes, then the tires look too small. Uh, unfortunately, with this build, I was really trying to go just as small as possible. I just want every, everything to be on the smallest scale possible with a massive engine in here. Uh, and I, I think the way this looks right now, without the gas tank, without the seat, these tires look perfectly sized. But as soon as I put that giant gas tank on here that I made, which I still don't like how big that thing is, and the seat on here, then yes, these tires just look way too small for this vehicle and it looks out of proportion. Which is why, three weeks ago, I bought two of these. Now these are 15 by 5 by 6 and these are 13 by 5 by 6 So these are two inches taller. And I do plan on eventually putting these tires on here, but I first want to get this thing running. I, do, I want to do the first test drive with these tires just, just to see how this thing rides, what it feels like, and all that kind of stuff. With these tires first, then once we do that, then I want to put the bigger tires on here. We'll have to do the gearing change. Then I can do the, the kickstand on here. But for now, you know, I want to get this thing running with these tires first just to see what it feels, you know, just to see what it feels like. I also, I want to smoke this back tire off, which I hope this engine can do. So this is another reason why I want to keep these small ones on here. So I think the next thing we should work on is uh, let's install the header and muffler setup. Now, a couple of videos ago, I was asking you guys about this muffler. I was saying, I was showing a couple other mufflers I have, like should we use this one or a couple other smaller ones or should I try to find an even smaller one than this and a lot of you guys just agreed I should just use this one and it looks, uh, it looks pretty good for the scale of this thing. So I, I also, I was considering getting stainless tubing for the header setup, for the headers, but I do plan on painting the headers black so it doesn't really make sense to buy stainless when I already plan on painting the headers black. So I'm just gonna be using uh, just thin wall tubing for the headers and it's gonna save me a little bit of money. So this is a, t a tube inside a tube for the headers on this thing. What the heck? Double tubing. So I tacked this into place just to kind of get an idea of what this would look like and I already just, I don't like this. This pipe is way too big, this inch and a half, looks way too goofy on uh, on this thing. So I have this inch and a quarter tubing that I'm going to replace this with. The challenge with this is I have to make sure there's enough room for my foot that's going to go right here. So I have to have the muffler kind of like, you know, far away from there so I don't burn my heel. On, on the muffler and I also have to have a header pipe going from here right next to the engine going under here so I have to make sure that that's super close to the engine but not so close it's gonna melt and burn the paint on this thing so so yeah this is kind of a challenge but I, do, I just don't like this this pipe is way too big so I'm gonna replace this with an inch and a quarter see if that'll look a little bit better focus there we go all right, so I was trying to figure out how do I weld this inch and a quarter tubing to this inch and a half inlet for the muffler. I was thinking of like machining something in between it and so I can weld these two together. But then I had a better idea. So I just machined this. This is the same taper as, as this and I'm going to try and use the press and press this piece of tubing onto here and hopefully it'll expand this side of this piece of tubing to match 
this inch and a half diameter. So let's see if this works. Spray some WD-40 on it for no particular reason. It's actually working! <laughs> it actually worked! Wow, well, I don't know why I'm surprised it worked. I don't know why it wouldn't work. Look at that! Now, I can weld this onto here. That actually... <laughs> that actually worked! Wow! Should I do it just a little bit more? It's a little... Let me just go a, just a little bit more. Check that out. Oh, that worked. That looks awesome. Sweet. All right, the headers and muffler is done. I think it turned out pretty awesome. I was trying to make it to where the muffler is as close to the center of the frame as possible, but just the way this is, this is as far down as I can get it. And I also wanted to make sure it wasn't sticking out too much, but I think it, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's a good location. I uh, definitely like how this turned out. Now, I'm definitely going to have to do some type of heat shield right here because my foot's going to have to go right here and I don't want to have to, I don't want to, I don't want my shoes melting, riding, uh, you know, just sitting right next to the hot muffler. So I was considering possibly doing uh, some exhaust wrap 
But I, I don't like the look of exhaust strap. I just it never looks right, and it's just I just don't like it. So I may just do some type of heat shield right here, uh, just to protect my foot from the from the header right here, and and then just paint the headers black whenever I paint this project. So the next thing we need to do is the battery. Now I went to uh, Schroeder's Honda. I bought this. This is a lithium battery, so these things are super lightweight. This was almost the smallest battery that I could find for this project. Uh, there was a smaller battery, but apparently it was like twice the price of this thing, so I just decided to go with this one because it's, you know, we don't have to get it too small. We don't have to have one too small. So pretty much the only place I can think of to put a battery is directly under the seat right here. And then uh, I'm gonna have to build some aluminum box, some enclosure that houses the battery. That way I can also have, I can also stuff some of the wiring in the battery right here. So that's the next thing. We need to build an aluminum box that mounts to the bottom of the, bottom of the seat to house the battery and some of the wiring. So I've been playing around with the wiring on this thing, which, which feels like a couple hours right now, and I, I can get the wiring to turn on and everything, I just can't get the engine to turn over. I've been trying everything, I've been looking at the wiring and everything. I, I remember having this issue, and I just remember that there was like a, a wire somewhere that I just had to hook up to something, and then it worked, and I'm pretty sure I have everything on here. That needs to be on here, it, it just won't fire up. I, the starter motor does work, so it's not that. I took a uh, pair of pliers and touched these two leads and it turned over. I kind of think it could be the starter solenoid. I don't, I don't, I'm grasping at straws right now, just trying this, trying that, and right now I want to try the starter solenoid. So I just pulled this starter solenoid off of a Tillotson engine actually, and they look very similar. They both have two wires coming out of them, so. Who knows? Let's try it. Let's swap these uh, starter solenoids and see if that works. If it doesn't, I don't know what else to try at this point. All right, so twist these two wires together. Turns on, 
Now, engine is on. Not sure why the turn signal. I don't know why the turn signal light turns on when I turn the engine on. That's kind of weird. All right, see if it works. Nothing. Still nothing. So honestly, so there's two plugs that this plug for for the uh, for this side of the uh, controls, the throttle control. There's two plugs that this plug turns it plugs into. There's this plug back here, and then this one up here. This one has three wires. This has five. This has five wires. So I kind of think maybe it's this one that this plugs into. But I don't know. Let's try this one. It makes more sense having this one because this one's up here where the uh, on this side of the wiring harness where the you know controls would be. So let's try it. It works! <laughs> awesome! Okay, so I just had, yeah, I had the plug plugged into the wrong side. But then is it the starter solenoid is bad? Because if it, let's, if it isn't bad, we can hear it clicking. Yeah. I hear, I hear nothing on this starter solenoid. So I think both. The starter solenoid was bad, and I just had this plugged into the wrong side. So it, it works, finally. Now, now what we need to do is test to see if we get spark. That's the next thing. Alright, turn this thing on. I've already been uh, off camera. I've been adding a bunch of stuff. I added these coils onto the frame right here, so those are mounted. I added oil to this thing, changed the oil filter. I'm just, I'm trying to get this thing running. I dying to see if this runs. So now, now, I put a spark plug on here just sitting on the frame. Now we need to see, does this thing get a spark? Engine is on. Here we go, is it sparking over? <laughs> Spark's working. All right, we're getting close. I already put oil in this thing. Uh, I just need to tidy up some of the wiring a little bit. We're getting closer and closer to a to trying to get this thing fired up. We actually uh, we need to we need to clean the carburetor. So those things are totally frozen up. Uh, everything on there that moves is totally stuck. So we need to clean the carburetors next. So like I said, we need to clean the carburetor. This thing's pretty. Everything that moves doesn't move anymore. Everything's stuck, frozen on here, and it looks in bad shape. So. I've heard some pretty good things about an ultrasonic cleaner cleaning carburetors, so we're gonna find out if this thing's worth however much I spent on it. This is from good old Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight uh, ultrasonic cleaner, so we'll see if this thing does any good cleaning carburetors. So I'm just gonna put water in this thing because I don't know what else to put. Let's just see what this thing does with water. So last night I was cleaning these carburetors, taking all this stuff off. There's like little screens back here for the fuel. Took those off, cleaned those and everything. And I was starting to reassemble some of this stuff. And last night I accidentally snapped a very important little screw inside these carburetors. 
Yeah, snapped that thing right in half. So this is the same screw for the other carburetor. You can see just how tiny this thing is. Now, I tried finding this thing on eBay, couldn't find it. Uh, aside from buying new carburetors, I wasn't really sure what else to do. And then I realized this morning, oh wait, I have machine equipment. Let me just make one. So this morning I spent only half an hour making this little thing. Same threads, uh, drilled a hole in the center just like how this thing has. And instead of uh, doing the hex head like this has, I decided to do to just uh, file a little slot on top of it, so therefore I can just tighten it with a flathead screwdriver. So, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. That saves me from having to buy new carburetors for this thing. Now, let's start reassembling this, and I'm gonna try really hard not to break anything else. carburetors are reassembled before we put them on the engine. I kind of want to redo this a little bit because this tray, the way that I have the tray bolted onto the frame, it uses the same three bolt holes as the seat. So it uses the same bolts as the seat. And I thought that was going to be better because, uh, you know, I don't have to drill any more holes and add more hardware, but I'm kind of realizing that because I'm having to, you know, have the bolts on here just to hold this thing in place and I'm realizing that when I take the seat off this tray is just going to fall down and I'm going to have to hold it in place while I put the hardware back on to hold the tray in place when I want to take the seat off and that's just that's extra steps I don't want to do that so I kind of want to redo this a little bit so I'm going to take all this stuff apart I'm going to cut off the tabs that I welded onto this tray weld on new ones and then drill some more holes onto here so therefore I can have uh, bolts that are that hold the tray independent from bolting the seat into place that way it's going to be a lot easier if i want to you know do anything to the wiring and just take the seat off and the tray stays put so bad. <coughs> That's probably not healthy. So I may have been a little too lazy to take the tape off before <laughs> welding. Yeah, that smelled so bad, but I finished the welding and then just got out of here and let the let the room clear. So, because I, I put electrical tape on here, because the positive of the battery goes right here, and I don't want it like accidentally touching the aluminum and like uh, uh, arcing. So I'm definitely gonna yeah, I'm definitely gonna replace this electrical tape before putting it back on.
fire extinguisher is right here, just for worst case. So let's, let's see if let's see if this works. Joke is on. It's not turning over that fast. I don't know if this battery's kind of dead or I don't know. It says it's full. Come on. Turn the idle up a little bit. Charge the battery. Where's the battery charger? All right, the battery's been charging for a little bit. Let's see. See if this thing will fire up now. Kill switch is or uh, choke is still on. Oil's topped off. Let's see if this thing will fire. Why am I nervous? I always get nervous when I'm doing stuff like this. When I'm trying to fire something up for the first time, I always get little butterflies. I don't know why. Turn the fuel back on. There we go. Oh, this thing sounds so cool. Come on. Turn the idle up a bit. Come on. It's starting to walk off its uh, its stands or the bricks that I'm holding that's holding this thing up, which would not be good because then it would just fall off the table. So that's just stay on the table now. All right, so there's one more test I want to do with this thing. I'm gonna pull the clutch in and put this thing into gear when it's running because I want to see this back tire spinning. I put a strap on it so it should stay on the table. I have the tire, you know, took the shock off and have this thing on bricks so it can free spin. I want to see what it looks like.
is the chain skipping? It's acting like it's getting caught on something. I don't know. Also, why does it sound like it's only running on one cylinder? So, it, it's running at least, but it doesn't really sound like a V-twin. It sounds like a single cylinder engine, and it just, I don't know. I've heard V-twins before, and this doesn't sound like it. So, either it's only running on one cylinder, or it's just the timing and the headers, different lengths, just make it sound like it's just a single cylinder. So, what I'm going to do, we're going to test it. I'm going to fire this thing up, let it idle. I'm gonna pull each one of these spark plugs out one at a time and see if the idle changes. If it changes, then it is running on that cylinder. If it doesn't change, then we have a problem. So, let's fire this thing out. running on both cylinders it just it doesn't sound like it it does not sound like a like a v-twin I don't know I guess I can still get shocked with with TIG gloves on yeah this thing's a, a little bit louder than I was uh, kind of expecting this muffler doesn't do that much for quieting this engine down which I don't mind loud engines but my neighbors on the other hand are a most of my neighbors are good it's just that one over there, and because I, I definitely, I definitely want to, you know, take this thing up the street a couple times. Now, just because it's running doesn't mean it's ready to test ride. Now we still have a bunch of stuff we need to do. We need to finish the rest of the wiring. We need to somehow bundle all this together and get it to fit right in here. We need to get the clutch working. That's the test that I wanted to do. Of you know, put it in gear, pull the clutch in, and see if I can stop the back tire with my bare hands. And it didn't really seem to want to. The clutch didn't seem to do anything, so hopefully, hopefully the clutch pads or clutch discs aren't stuck together. I also need to hook up the front brakes, the old, the only brakes on this thing, as well as uh, finalize everything, get the gas tank installed, hook up the pulse pump, see you know, all this. Stuff. Then, then once we do all that, it is ready for its first test ride. So that's going to be in the next video of this project, which is actually going to be the next video because I'm not going to do another video of the rock crawler. I am dying to ride this thing. So I'm going to immediately start working on the next video of this project and see if we can finalize all this stuff to do a first test ride. So anyway, I guess that's going to be it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, <laughs> so I may have dropped the chain down in the engine, which is normally fine. Normally it doesn't, you know, normally you can just fish it out with like a screwdriver. But this time it dropped down kind of pretty far. And I can't, I can't really get at it. it I need it to go this way. Can I like go? I have an idea. Here goes nothing. Oh, it's leaking on. That's a bad idea. Bad idea. Mm, yeah, just give me a minute. I'll get it eventually. Just give me... Just give me a second. Alright, I was able to fish the chain out with a magnet, so... Thankfully, I was able to fix that. That could have been bad. Here we go. Well, that's a. Uh, that's not good. So it seems I put these backwards or something, because they're not. It's not lining up with this. These holes are not lining up with that. So it seems like I, I installed these backwards. That's. <laughs> 
flip them around. Doesn't. There's no arrows or anything. 